Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to look at the latest static releases of Gecko Linux. Now, this is based on OpenSUSE. So we talked about the static OpenSUSE leap release a couple weeks ago. And uh, Gecko Linux is basically like OpenSUSE for the person who doesn't know how to or does not want to take the time to configure an OpenSUSE to work. As I did mention, there were a few little issues I came into. I was able to resolve most of those issues, but all in all, OpenSUSE did end up working out pretty well, but it's not necessarily the go-to for the new Linux distro. But if you do need some OpenSUSE type effect or you like the operating system itself and you think it's a good place to start, then consider having a look at Gecko Linux, which basically takes OpenSUSE and turns it into something that is more user-friendly and ready out of the box. So here you grab your installers for whichever desktop environment you want. I downloaded the Cinnamon version, so we're going to be looking at the installation process because this is geared towards a new user. I want to verify that it's good for a new user. So it does tell you here our, our features. We do have TLP for you guys on laptops. We have the, uh, the live keys for each individual desktop environment. You grab those separately instead of just grabbing a net installer and choosing your desktop environment and configuring things out of the box. There's a lot more setup there. They do have a nice guide here. Let's walk through these real quick. What is the difference from OpenSUSE and Gecko? So Gecko comes as an offline installable DVD USB image. If you're using OpenSUSE, you are going to need to run connected to an to a um, internet connection. They do have static and rolling versions, very much like OpenSUSE. Now, what we're going to look at today is the Cinnamon version of static. So it's basically the Cinnamon version of the OpenSUSE Leap which was recently released. So Gecko Linux offers customized editions optimized for different desktop environments, whereas OpenSUSE requires the user to know how to install patterns and packages for different desktop environments, which is good. If you know what your target is, then this is going to make it a little bit easier. Gecko comes pre-installed with common niceties such as proprietary multimedia codecs, whereas OpenSUSE, for legal reasons, requires users to know how to add the extra repositories when those are needed. Gecko Linux prefers packages from the uh, Pac-Man repo when they are available, whereas OpenSUSE's default packages don't work with patent-restricted features, even if the features are installed from other sources. Gecko Linux comes pre-configured with that uh, with what many would consider to be good for font rendering, whereas many users find OpenSUSE's default font configuration to be less than desirable. Gecko Linux does not force the installation of additional recommended packages after installation, whereas OpenSUSE does pre-install patterns and automatically installs recommended package dependencies, thus causing many additional and possibly unwanted packages. That could possibly mean you could run into a few issues with Gecko, but I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it's just the required is not a problem, just the recommended, which I can understand. Um, Gecko Linux's desktop programs can be uninstalled with their dependencies, whereas OpenSUSE patterns often cause uninstalled packages to be automatically reinstalled. So here you have the download links. So there's static editions, there's rolling editions. So you can uh, head on over to the, um, yeah, to the download section. It's just the same link on the same page. Uh, so anyway, you can grab the one that you want. Like I said, I grabbed the Cinnamon version. So we're going to go ahead and head on over to the computer now and see how easy this is to install. All right, so we put the Gecko Linux static Cinnamon version in. We're going to push the button and uh, we'll see what happens next. All right, so we can choose fail safe, our standard, our media check, or boot from the hard drive. So that's a nice handy feature. All right, so here we have landed on the desktop. So it does uh, appear as though they're using more of an, an older style of uh, the menu here on Cinnamon instead of using more of a newer style, although I do believe that the version of Cinnamon is the current version. So uh, you can kind of see how it's behaving just like the old school Cinnamon rather than the new one. So um, it is the new version. It's just, let me go ahead and just verify that. Go with our system information, and we should be on a cinnamon like 4.4 maybe, so cinnamon 4.4.8. So it's just configured to be um, to be uh, uh, like the older form of cinnamon. Let's go ahead and hit the installation process and see how our install works. 
It looks like we have the Calamaris installer, which I kind of knew that was in the documentation. Choosing our default layouts here, and then do I want to erase the disk or install it alongside? We're just going to go ahead and erase the disk, so we're killing poor Ubuntu, and we're adding Gecko. All right. We could do Gecko. Maybe I could say Lizard People, but anyway, let's go ahead and enter my super secret uh, password that's definitely not 123. We can log in automatically without asking for the password. Use the same for the administrative account. That's all good. And hit the installation button. And we are off and running. So this will probably take about, I don't know, four or five minutes, probably, maybe a little longer. So we'll come back when it's done. All right, so there we are all done. And yeah, it took right about five minutes, I'd say maybe actually a little bit less. So we'll go ahead and click the restart now option. If it doesn't allow us to kick out the uh, ISO image here out of the drive, then that's okay. We'll just go in here and just boot off of the hard disk. So it doesn't. So we're just going to go down there and boot off of the hard disk. Of course, if you're installing this on real medium, you would just take the disk out and then you'd be installing directly off the hard drive. All right, so here we are. We have landed on our login screen. Let's go ahead and check our desktop environments. We have OpenBox available, and then we have Cinnamon and Cinnamon Software Rendering. Since we are in a virtual machine and have not installed virtual machine codecs, we will probably be dropped back down into software rendering mode. This VB client failed notification, this is related to my virtual box. Um, I actually saw that with OpenSUSE as well. I didn't specifically highlight it in the videos. But I did see that in the in the settings there. All right. So here we are landing on the desktop. We do have um, our basic cinnamon theming. As we would expect, everything looks uh, pretty good. Here's our Yast installer. Here's our system configuration. Um, overall, I can say comments. This is definitely not the prettiest theming I've ever seen. I actually think it's kind of uh, kind of ugly and atrocious. So let's actually see if they gave us other theming options as well. Let's go ahead and boot up the Cinnamon settings panel and see if we have anything that's not horrible and clashing and all that. So we have a variety of things. It looks like I can maybe go back into the default Windows um, uh, excuse me, the default Linux Mint theming. And icons. We do not have a lot of choices in our icons. Definitely, uh, definitely has, um, definitely has some some theming concerns, uh, I would say. So I don't like the theming out of the box, but that's actually fairly easy to change. You don't really need the language installers. We can head on over to our, let's see, desktop backgrounds, customizing our desktop. We can auto arrange desktop settings. If you wanna turn on your, your icons, you can do that. Everything else is uh, pretty much cinnamon, as cinnamon usually is. So one of the big selling points of OpenSUSE is Yast. Uh, I didn't actually highlight Yast as much as I should have in the uh, OpenSUSE videos, uh, but this being that this is a, an OpenSUSE derivative, Yast is going to be very important. And uh, I think that Yast is definitely one of the, the big selling points of OpenSUSE in that it kind of bridges a user interface to what the underlying core of the system is. So if you are wanting to learn a little bit more about managing and administering Linux, I think OpenSUSE is a good bet because of Yast, where it kind of gives you the breakdowns of everything that you need. And uh, overall, it's a, a pretty user-friendly system, but at the same time, it'll give you a little bit of, of tips and tricks for how to get stuff to work. All right, so here is our... Uh, this is our uh, software installer section. So this is um, some extra drivers that it has here. We have a little key, so we're, it kind of wants to install some drivers. So that's all right. Here's our repositories. 
Now, one of the things that we had mentioned in the release notes um, that I looked at uh, prior to doing the video is one of the things that they do here is they give you a lot of other packages already configured and ready to go that you don't get in OpenSUSE. So if you're a person that does want to use Google Chrome, you can do that. And you have the options of Google Chrome Beta, the Stable, and the Unstable. So of course, your basic one is the Google Chrome. This is your basic run-of-the-mill Google Chrome. You have your Unstables and you have your Betas as well. Here's your Google Talk plugin. This is handy if you do need to use your computer for like Google Voice and things like that. All right, so here's our uh, our Leap OS and non-OS things. We have NVIDIA, so if you are running an NVIDIA driver, you have those options over there. Here's some things from Pac-Man. And if you need to use Skype, you have this already pre-configured as well. So this is a big selling point is to head on into Yast, go into your repositories, and go ahead and install those software packages as you happen to need them. All right, so that's Yast software. There will be a separate Yast as well, which basically manages the rest of the system. So let's go ahead and have a look at what that one looks like. So over here, here's uh, online updates. Oh, I don't need to run online updates. Close, please. All right, software management, software repositories. This is going to get us back to uh, what we saw before. These are the various repositories that we have available. So they're enabled. They're set to auto-refresh. Any hardware information, um, printers. We're going to see if this actually fixes the problems that OpenSUSE has with the printer. So if you remember, there was one, uh, there was one printer driver that um, uh, that just would not work. And so what I wanted to see is I wanted to go ahead and see if there's, um, let's see if that's the spot where you can add a printer at. We're going to add new printer configuration. We're going to see if it finds my printer. Now, very few systems actually find my printer. I usually have to install it by going onto the website and manually downloading the drivers. So we'll go ahead and let it do its thing there, and uh, we'll come back to that in just a moment if I can. So over here is our bootloader services, network, kernel settings, uh, mail servers, host names, just a lot of different things that you can do inside of here. So these guys over here, of course, will scan us down through the, the various views. So here's your support, miscellaneous. All right, let's see what this is doing. Retrieving printer driver information. We're going to go ahead and give let this do its thing and come back when it's done. All right, so it's done. It says there's no matching driver found, which I kind of expected anyway. Very few systems I found that actually runs this print driver right. So let's just go ahead and... Um, go on to the manufacturer's website and get the driver running. So we're going to do um, an HLL230, I'm sorry, 2380DW driver and Linux. Make sure we're downloading directly from Brother's website, support.brother.com. In this case, it detects here. Since this is OpenSUSE, we have RPM as an option. And we're just going to go ahead and download the driver install tool. We're going to agree to hand over my firstborn child and download the EULA. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. I don't need to do anything else. All right. So now what we're going to do is let's, um, I don't need that. I need a terminal. All right. So we're going to go to our downloads folder, verify the drivers there. G unzip the driver. Is it G unzip? All right, so now we just need to bash the file and input our model name, HLL2380DW. Yes, we're going to run. So this is going to run the print driver and the scanner drivers. And then when it asks us uh, if we're going to specify a port, we're going to give it an IP address. So this is that part there. And you just need to know what your IP address is for your printer. I've actually locked my printer onto a specific IP address. 141. And we're going to test that out. That should work, hopefully does sound as though it is working. 
So it looks like our, uh, our printer driver is done and I hear that printing in the background. I'm not sure if you hear it as well, but it is indeed printing. So let's look at our document scanner and it is ready to scan. So let's go ahead and run the scan and see if that scans. And that is actually scanning. Let me prove it. All right, so I lift up the tray there. You can kind of see we got some light filtering in there. So right here, just going right to the manufacturer, we actually had our drivers, our printer drivers set up perfectly and flawlessly without any issues. And uh, that actually did not happen under OpenSUSE. There was a package missing. So Gecko seemed to have resolved that package. Let's see what's installed by default here. We have basic system utilities, text editors, archive managers, calculators. Uh, it looks like we have our, our full LibreOffice suite, Pigeon, Thunderbird, Firefox. Uh, so we don't have the databasing installed, but we do have everything else installed. Clementine, VLC, basic administration. Don't forget Yast is an excellent uh, administration tool in and of itself. You can kind of see all the Yast stuff there. Here's our preferences, places, there we have it. All right, so uh, there is a quick look and easy installation of Gecko Linux. All right, so let's do a really brief walkthrough. Overall, first and foremost, very easy to install, exactly like they say. They even had a few more things configured correctly, such as getting the printers to work. I didn't have to fight with it for about a half an hour of research to find that one obscure 32-bit package that wasn't installed on OpenSUSE. That worked right out of the box, so my printer's working just fine. Excellent option there. All right, so other options we had there are... Um, we see the a variety of easy to download desktop environments already configured and set up. So we don't need to fight with that anymore. We don't need to manually install those or really in OpenSUSE, it's not a really big trouble to install those. But if you miss something in the configuration, you could get a system that doesn't work quite as well. They've seemed to solve all of those. On the downsides, the theming is horrendous. Maybe out of the box, um, I love the the distros that put so much attention the, on even the theming that they look really good and attractive out of the box. And this, they've done such a good job getting everything working so well. We have a good functional system, but it looks horrendously ugly. And I think that that possibly is going to be a turnoff for some people. Now, again, depending on your desktop environment, this is Cinnamon. I could go into the Cinnamon repositories, download themes, make it work just fine. If you had GNOME, you wouldn't know the difference because GNOME really doesn't do much with theming anymore. You have Plasma, same thing. Download the themes, install them, apply them. No big deal. Other things like Mate and XFCE, I'd be a little bit more concerned about theming options on those. Nevertheless, it would be really cool if they put a lot more into getting a lot better and a lot more robust theming set up, being that they paid attention to so many details in so many other areas. Overall, though, it is an excellent system. Definitely, if you're wanting to learn some more about Linux, this is a good system to use. And for sure, you could go ahead and get this guy running, up and running, and you'd have a good OpenSUSE build without spending a lot of extra time to get everything configured. So that's my final take on Gecko Linux. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.